So you have a JSON file that you need to convert to say CSV. Well, I'm gonna show you how, and also show you how to stop where extra lines are being created, where there's returns in the data. So let's jump over to my R Studio. So if you want to follow along with the JSON file that I'm gonna be using, I've got that in the description below. And then also I've got a link to the R script as well. So the first thing you wanna do is install JSON Lite and Tidyverse. JSON Lite is going to be doing the converting and then we're going to be using packages within Tidyverse that will allow us to do some cleaning up of the data, especially when it comes to the returns that will happen in the data, which I'll show you in a sec. If you install packages, JSON Lite and Tidyverse, and then libraries, JSON Lite, Tidyverse and read R. So we just install those now. And then once that's done, all we need to do is just save the JSON file that's going to be converted and then put into a data frame. Wherever you've put the actual JSON file, you need to point to where that is within the actual name. So say if you've got it saved not in your documents folder and somewhere else, you need to do an example of it looking like this to point to the folder where you've got it saved. But I've got it saved within the documents folder. So it just needs to put in the name and then what the file is. So all I do is just run this. So then it saves it as a data frame. And as we can see here, we have our data here. And as you can see, there's a lot of data in here and everything looks okay so far. We're not seeing any returns on any lines or anything. Everything looks good. So what we can we do? We can just then export it as a CSV. And then the way to do that is to do write.csv. And then within brackets, you put whatever you've called the file that you saved. In this case, we just called it DF for data frame. And then what you want to save it as within the folder of your documents folder and then I'm just going to call it json underscore twitter dot csv and then I am removing the numbers because if you don't export false you'll get one two three four you might want that if you do want the numbers down the side as an extra column you can include them but I'm removing those and that's why I've got row dot names equals false now if we run this we now have our file ready to look at and you might be thinking ah that's nice and quick and easy no problem but we have a slight issue we have a problem here where originally when we looked at the data frame we had ids all along here no problem we're looking at it no problem nothing there like literally each line is all fine but now we're actually looking at this within our excel file we can see additional lines have happened what's causing that well basically if we now go back to our json file we have all this information in here but if we pick an example of where a user id and this is the best way to kind of figure out what's kind of happening within the file once you've done this is where you find something's gone onto a different line we're going to just take that because that's not a user id but it's created that extra line and we need to find out where that is and then fix the problem so what we do is now we've got that information we can do a search on our json file and then we can see here this is happening under what's called description and then it says army veteran duh, 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 duh. so if we now go back to our file here and also let's show this here so we can have a look at not only the excel file but also the json file at the same time if we look at that line we can see user id matches what's here it then goes on to user id string which is the same and then it's got this information here under name, which is name there. And as you'll notice, you've got these little parts where it says user.id, but here it says ID. It's because it's linking where it's nested user, and then it's pulled out the additional information where you've got your headers, and then you've got subheaders, and then subheaders. This is now making user ID. And that's useful information to know, which you'll see in a sec on how to clean this up. So now we know this is happening here. What needs to be done? is figure out what's causing this and we can see here before that information there's these backslashes and ends along here and what these are and there's also ones that are these are creating new lines so where someone's returned on whatever the information is so in this case they've tweeted something but this this is actually their description they've not done return so in json if there's data that then goes onto an additional line it will add either a slash n or a slash r or both or twice like you've got here depending on how many times it's moved within to a new line and this is not noticeable when you're actually looking at it within the data frame but when you export it it happens because it's automatically going oh, it's a new line, so it moves it to a new line. What you need to do is figure out where these are happening and remove them within the data 
and it will give you a cleaner result where this will no longer sit on an extra line. It will sit within what is counted as the description here. And we can see that's happened a couple of times and this is why it's there. So here it's time to show duh, 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 and it's, uh, it's time to show. So we can see it's gone, gone, gone. And because it's got two ends, it's, that's the reason you got an end. So it's given you here's your blank line. So you return and then the new line, which is that one. So that's why you got two ends. Now we know that information and we know it sits in description. What we need to do is understand how do we clean this up? So if we go back to my RStudio and if we close that and then come down to here, what we have is a way to look at all the different columns. Now you remember when I said we had user like this and then ID, we want to be able to see all the different columns that come first and then find out where all these different ends are or R's. So in this case, if we do a copy and then find N and then just do a search, we'll find a few here, a few there. So we can see here it's now saying full text. So it's not only in description, you're also seeing it in full text and there'll probably be others as well. And because full text falls under not only user, so we've got user, description is one. And then we know it's going to fall under here, which is full text, which is one bit we need to look at. And then if we look again, let's find some more full text, description, description, full text text and there's quite a few there and we have a few more so a quick look this one's returned a lot and all i'm finding is ends at the moment and uh, let's see if we can find any r's let's go in and yep there's some here so we've got an r n r so it's been returned quite a bit and that's under description so we can start to see where these problems are and what you can do when you're going along and just sort of checking what these are going to be called you know you need to look at what all the different subheaders are so when we go into names and look at the columns, we can see all the different first load of columns. Under those columns, we'll have subheaders. So as you can see, user is number one. So then to view that, if we look at names and then do data frame and then point to column of users, we can then see all the column names that are nested under users printed down here. And as you can see, we have a lot. There's even more there. And then because that's a user, we want to then see other ones as well. And in this case, we want to be able to see the sub level of what quote tweet would be. So quote tweet is this one here. So we want to look what that one has and we do run and then we can see the different ones under here and we can see there's a full text here as well. So the chances are they will fall under that. And then we've got where you've got quote tweet, but then there's also user. So there's even more nesting going on underneath. So not only do you have where it's gone under one, it's then gone on another, and then there's still that information that's being nested in there. So then you need to also then look at that. So it just includes having another dollar sign that would then allow you to view that information. So if we print that, we can then look at that information under there. And as expected, it's the same information that you get under user, but this is related related under quote tweet user. And then if that exists, anything that we know that user has quote tweet user probably will have those returns as well so it's another area where you want to clean up and this is a good way of being able to look at all the different bits of information all you need to do is just have a little look at what your json file is doing and then just search on your headers and then just keep just drilling down to find out all the different bits of information because then what you want to do is just figure out okay where's description oh i know descriptions under user then description and then this gives you the opportunity to replace information blank. So basically what I'm doing now is using where I found, here's the data frame. We now know under quote tweet, under user, there is description. So if we go back here, we can see description. There will be either N's or R's. In this case, all I found was N's, no R's under it. So all I've done is go, here's my data frame, then go down to the quote tweet column, then drill down to the user and then go to the description. So now it's just looking at that one section. And then you want to point a change that you're using called G sub and then within there all you're doing is doing an open bracket putting in what you want to find and then what you want to replace it with which in this case is just two quotation marks to create a blank so then it removes it and then you're pushing that back to the same column so you're basically overwriting that particular bit of information in that column so wherever it finds that slash n in description under quote tweet user it will replace it with nothing and you can 
and keep doing the same with all the different areas. So what I found was under user description, there was just ends, but then I also found there were R's. So I've done two separate ones where I've done remove the ends, replace it with blank, and then done the same again where I'm removing any of the R's. And then outside of description, we knew there were full text. So what I've done is replaced where I found ends in the full text. So the only place where there was the slash and the R was in the description, but you might find them elsewhere. But what you can do is when you run it is to check your file and if you find any that are still giving you extra lines that's when you can have a little bit of more of a search within your JSON file and it will give you where that's happening you can then locate what that data is doing and then you can find those columns where you just need to do a find and replace which is all that's doing there and it will sort the problem so if i just run all these now it will just go through all those columns pick out all that data remove all those slashes and n slashes and r's in these five different sections and then it will replace it within the data frame so now your data frame clean you won't be able to see that information in here because remember before it just looked normal anyway but it's when you export it this information will change so if we just close this file don't save and then if we rerun now and then open up again we can see we have no information pulling over there and then if we go do 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 do, do is this one here so remember it was this one instead of that information which was pulling onto separate lines is now showing totally just on one line which means you won't get the return so if you're looking at something and you wanted it to be nice and formatted in a return way you won't have that information when you pull it but at least you've got it all on one line and then you can just export and play around with it as you please so i hope you found this video useful if you did please give a like and subscribe and if you want to carry on your analytical journey check out these videos over here and as always until next time